Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. Um, it's telling me this is going away in Google Hangouts. All right. Um, this morning we have from, I'm not sure, I know the company was founded in 1866. It's now been, it's been owned by Brown Foreman since 1956, but we have Jack Daniels number seven, the green label. Yeah, it's um, sour mash whiskey, uh, Tennessee whiskey, bourbon, uh, 80 proof, age at least four years. Um, it's got a different label, same bottle designed with a different label if you look carefully. It's only available in a few states. I got this. This was purchased for me as a gift in Texas. So still got a 30% of the bottle left, 25%, I guess. Um, do a good number of taste challenges with it. Now, we have the lowly, I guess you'd call it Tom Sims, Heaven Hill brand. This was introduced from what I could find out in 1963. I believe there was a Tom Sims distillery at one time, but it was a very small operation and it didn't last. Doesn't say anything about sour mash. Usually they'll tout that. So if they're not mentioning it, it ain't. Kentucky whiskey. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. So it's straight, not blended. I wouldn't do a taste challenge with a blended versus straight bourbon anyway. So Tennessee versus Kentucky. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Forgot to make, <clears throat> forgot to make my tags. Well, I hope there's no um, catastrophes today. You know, like spilling stuff. Although it seems like there's always something, but that's the risk of going live. Um, there's so many different things I want to try. I want to try so many things, but with liquor, it's, it's, tr it's problematic because you can only drink so much. I mean, I guess you could drink excessively, but you're going to have a lot of problems with that. So, uh, I just have to have this patience. Just say, well, I got to wait. I got to wait. I got to wait. I got to drink it down. I got to do a another taste challenge series so it's just slow it's frustrating beer it just buy it try it buy it try it you know what i mean so it's very interesting to do the liquor i find it's extremely interesting i'm not saying it's more interesting than beer but uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's less interesting either. I never did think it was. Uh, I just didn't have an interest in it per se years ago. I was focused on beer. You know, I actually did wine before beer, not on video, but in tasting. And so I think they're all very interesting and worthwhile to study beer, wine and liquor. Um, So I've had people ask me, oh, you're giving up beer to go to, I'm not giving up anything to go to anything else. I can see how a person might want to um, say, oh, I'm going to do whiskey. I'm only going to do gin or just focus on one area. And I, I, I would take, no, I would have no issue with that. I wouldn't take issue with it if that's what they want to do. I'm just saying in my case, I like to jump around. Maybe I jump around too much, whatever. Uh, it's just interesting to try them all. I don't have favorites. I mean, there's some things I like more than others. What I mean is I don't play favorites. In other words, I don't have some hidden agenda or hoping somebody's going to win or I just try them and say, okay, that's what I think. I said this before, I'm not on a great quest. This is not a great quest. There's no end game. There's no great greater goal. 
All right, I'm not I'm not trying to get anywhere. I'm not trying to do anything aside from tasting them and telling you what I think. Uh, other people have a different idea about that. To them, it's very important, very important. It's a serious, serious business. Craft beer, expensive liquor or gourmet liquor, wine, whatever. It's very serious. There's no room for frivolity. There is a goal, there is an end game, and there's a quest. And so there's going to be a conflict between somebody like me who's just, just doing it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just doing it for no particular reason aside from just being interested in it. And then people that are on this great quest, so there's going to be conflict. So you, you understand that. All right, anyway, but remember, I have a standing offer if there's a problem. You have 30 minutes on this channel live to state your case. Got to be really you, though. You know what I mean? Can't be up there with a mask and using a fake name. We don't entertain. You know, you want to be anonymous. You got legs. Walk on off, you know, if you don't like it. You know what I mean? Okay. Oh, let me mix them up. I was shocked, you know, because I thought Tom Sims, this, my friend David didn't like it at all. I, I said, he's going to take 10 years. 10 years, I'll go to his house. He'll still be sitting there unused. I said, you mind if I um use that in taste challenges? He said, take it, take it. I said, okay. But then later he said, you're an Indian giver. I said, what? Because you want it. I said, wait a minute. You said, take it. I, I had no great need to use Tom Sims. I just hated to see it wasted. That's the difference. I didn't want it. I bought it for him. I wasn't dying to have it or even put it in his taste show. I thought it would be interesting. And if he would have said, no, I want to keep it for various reasons, I would have said, well, okay. Um, so I, I couldn't understand that. Um, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm certainly not going to worry about it. But it'd be like if I had bought some food here, let's say I had, you know, that's going to expire, right? Not liquor, but food. And somebody said, are you going to eat that head of lettuce? It's just, and I say, no, nah, I changed my mind. Well, if they said, can I have it? I say, yeah, you could have it because I'm not going to, I'm not going to eat it. But why waste it? I hate to see things wasted. Um, well, that's just me, personal thing. All right, so let's go with this taste challenge. Um, just, uh oh, I think I put a little bit more of this. Like, I mean, a tenth of an ounce. But sometimes that little bit of weight, to me, maybe my hands are sensitive, I, I can't detect it. I, of course, it wouldn't really matter here because I don't know which is which already. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm worried about it. But um, so that was kind of a pointless exercise just now. Still, they look the same. I mean, they just look the same. Nice swishiness. Uh, but you think Jack Daniels, that's a liter bottle, by the way. That's a liter. So it's 25 I think it was $25, but almost $25 even after tax, what they told me. Um, and the Tom Sims was $9.99 for the $7.50. And both of these bottles were purchased in Texas, by the way. Not in the same part of Texas, not in the same town, but both from Texas. So, And also, I don't think I can get either one of those in Louisiana. I don't think I can get either one of these here. Now, I could be wrong, you know, like... If you go to Lake Charles or Shreveport or Natchitoches, like on the west side, sometimes on that edge, you could see stuff that you wouldn't see around here. Beer, wine, and liquor. Well, I don't know about wine because I hadn't really researched that. But beer, for sure, that's without a doubt. And maybe liquor. <coughs> so let's... Check it out. 
This smells now. I think it. What the last taste challenge was shocking. Okay, because you figure one bottle that's twice as much as the other should be twice as good. You'd think that well, it really wasn't. And in fact, I got them mixed up. So Tom Sims really argued well for itself. So that's telling me that Heaven Hill can make an inexpensive straight bourbon whiskey that can really hold its own. Now they're blended whiskeys. I don't find they do too well. They have strange flavors. They're off flavors and they're odd and they're not really too pleasant. And even the company admitted it, their spokesman admitted on, what is that, whiskey.com. They took a tour of their distillery and they were saying, kind of laughing it off, which is fine, you know, but ha <laughs> ha. We just used that in our blended whiskey. So guy kind of laughed in an embarrassed way, in a, sort of. Because he was asking him, the German guy said, what do you do with batches that are off or not right? Because that's going to happen. He said, oh, we use it in our blended, which is probably what all companies do, I guess. But um, theirs seem a little, hmm. Now, Sazerac does straight, cheap, straight bourbon whiskeys also, like Ancient Age, $9.99 a bottle. Ancient age, uh, ancient, ancient age, the six year age, which I bought for the same price in Mississippi. Was it $8.99 or $9.99? Can't remember. It was very inexpensive. I was shocked. But um, it, are there any cheap, straight bourbon whiskeys from Brown Foreman in that price range? Um, no. There's straight whiskey, though, but it's, um, you know, early times. But I think in some countries isn't early times sold as bourbon because it is, you know, it's they have some that's aged in new barrels. And don't they have some early time specialties that you don't really see around here? We just get early times. Straight whiskey. It is bourbon, except that it's aged in used barrels. So it disqualifies it on a technical in a technical sense which you, you have to have parameters, okay? Jason Jennings says, thumbs up, thank you. All right, so this, the thing, but the thing that tripped me up was I forgot that Jack Daniels did taste very corn. And I was ranting about that a year ago, about it tastes like corn, uh, Quaker grit, uh, grits. And then I forgot, and so when I did the taste challenge, I, I got confused. This smells a little charred, a little woody, and very corny. Bourbon has to be at least 51% corn. It's a corn, majority corn whiskey, all right? Some people can't stand that, you know? So, I mean, I could understand if you disliked it. This one smells more candy corn, right? So this one has more sugar sweetness on the nose came you know sweet corn uh -huh. and this is more of that quaker grits standard corn grits aroma hmm. hard to say i think maybe initially the left hand is the jack daniels and the right hand is the tom sims but it is a taste challenge so i had better taste them Um, char wood is a strong note here. Sweetness from the corn, that whiskey twang, you know, that a lot of people just don't like. And when I was younger, I couldn't stand it as a child. My grandmother used to get these liquor filled candies, you know, those chocolate candies. And I would say, Ugh. but I would want to eat them, you know, because it was chocolate, but I didn't like the taste of whiskey or rum or whatever, but I was three years old, so why would I? Yeah, they would let me eat that stuff. I guess they just were kind of like permissive in some ways, you know, let you drink out the beer bottle. Daddy, give me a sip, give me some, you know, let you drink the Miller High Life or the Schlitz, whatever they're drinking. I don't, ever, I don't remember ever asking to taste wine though for some reason. Maybe because they would drink that more in the winter and we wouldn't be on the back patio in the heat and you want to drink. But I used to love beer when I was little. My, my father says, all babies love beer. <laughs> Jason Jennings says, I'm a fan of Jim Bean. Not familiar with Tom Sims in Ohio. Yeah, it's it's rare, kind of rare. But, you know, you might see it here or there. 
lurk. I, I call it lurking around the shelves, you know. Okay. Now this thing over here, to my right, could be your left. Very strong chart. All the stuff I described on the left is much stronger here. It's a much bolder flavor. And what was the bolder flavor Tuesday, two days ago? The Tom Sims. That threw me off. That was the bold flavor. That was the energized flavor. You know, that Jack Daniels was kind of laying there like dull. Well, you know, dull. This one is like bold, maybe too strong, maybe a little too um, garish or something. Maybe that's why David didn't like it because it was too loud, you know, like going down the uh, the uh, laundry detergent aisle with all the loud labels, you know. So maybe he didn't like that presentation. He has a much better dialed in perception of whiskey anyway, I suppose. I mean, better than me, but I can only taste for myself, so. He could do a way better whiskey channel, maybe, but he got to have a channel. He has no channel. <laughs> has no YouTube account. You might have thought, oh, that's him commenting on my comment and follow me. No, it ain't him. Because he said he was telling me I ought to get a channel so I could comment. I said that would be a good idea. An account, you know, I was like, well, you just look stuff up on YouTube. You know, just randomly look stuff up. He can't comment because he has no account. He just has no interest in it. But I was saying, you ought to make a channel. He'll never do it. But if he did, he'd probably do a better, perhaps, I say perhaps he'd do a better job than I am on this. But we'll never know, I suppose. He might shock me, but I don't look for it. All right. He wanted to do some more reviews. He had some pretty expensive beer he bought. He was excited about it. And he was telling me on the phone, we ought to review, we're going to review all these. I said, okay. And then he has some cheap ones too. He's like me, you know, jump cheap, expensive, cheap, expensive. All right. Boy, that's a lot of charred wood. It's almost like they used the alligator char level on this. Maybe Heaven Hill noticed some flaws with Tom Sims and for $9.99 a bottle, you can understand that. So maybe they used the alligator char, aged it for four years. We know it's an age statement, four years, to cover up, you know what I'm saying? To cover up some little problems there because it's so bold on that end that if there's some other deficits, maybe it's kind of overriding that and you don't taste it. Could be, I don't know. It'd be a good idea. Now this one here is so much lighter. They're both 80 proof. I don't mean in the ABV. I just mean in the body, the flavor, the presentation. It's more refined in a way. Is it better? Well, I'm not too sure about that. Does, he says, David does need a channel. Smiley face with eye, sunglasses. Yeah. He's just not, I don't know. I didn't even have a channel for years. I think I started one in 07 so I could make comments. You know, he likes to do the reviews. He likes to talk about the products on the phone or in person. All right. And he'll make a long discussion and I'll listen, you know, about, oh, this and that with the beer industry. And I would say, that's why you should have a channel because people might want to hear that. Some people will get angry, you know, and they'll say, well, let me tell you something. You, 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 or this and that and all. And then I don't know if he would take it too well, but uh, um, but he just privately tells me that. Uh, 
and he'll go to a bar and talk about it and maybe things will get heated. But to, but to broadcast it uh, on the internet, it just there's no interest area there. He's say, well, you do that, you do that. So, okay. Um, uh. All right, I think this is Jack Daniels and I think this is Tom Sims. And I think the Tom Sims, if you can excuse me saying this, I think the Tom Sims might be better. Let's call it like that. It might be better. I, I, so you say, well, that's a tie then. Yeah, I guess. So. But then if it's a tie, then it's a win for Tom Sims because it's half the price. So, right. So by virtue of the price, it's an automatic win. Yeah. So what I recommend, Tom, Sims, I would recommend it. I would repurchase it and not as a gift that somehow came back to me. <laughs> I would purchase it just to drink. I mean, I'm not going to go running around bragging about how great it is. No, but I didn't do that with Jack Daniels ever, have I? No, I just I couldn't understand the hate for Jack Daniels. It's kind of, you know, standard, whatever, but for people to say it tastes like airplane glue and, you know, compost, garbage, and all that. That's going too far. I mean, if you don't like it, fine, but don't, it, there gotta be some perspective on it. So I guess Tom Sim, Sims wins, it wins. So what can you say? I'm sorry, uh, I have no ax to grind for or against Jack Daniels, I can assure you that. I have no ax to grind for or against any beer, wine or liquor brand. Some people think I do, I don't, but if you wanna believe that, go ahead. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Um, but I know the truth. I, I know what the truth is. Uh, so let's say Tom Sims, please be Tom Sims. <laughs> it's JD. So I guess I just don't know. What can I say? I don't know. <sighs> Shock again. Okay, well, this is tricky, <laughs> tricky, tricky, tricky. Um, what's coming up in two days? Um, let me go look. I'll be right back. Oh, that was a waste of time because I'm looking on the counter where I have the lineup, but I can't, I don't think the lineup was made uh, necessarily strict according to what I have on my uh, li uh, YouTube lineup. So well, uh, anyway, it's gonna be another bourbon that I have, uh, like Old Forrester. Um, I got Virginia Black coming up. You say Virginia Black? Yeah, it's like a mix of different straight bourbons, two, three and four year olds. That's a strange, but Food Quick did a review and he liked it. He said um, he could he could see drinking that, you know? And I told him, I said, I like it too, but it's an odd product. My friend David hated it. <laughs> he said, I'm telling you, they're adding flavoring to that. Flavoring, he might be right. It just says American whiskey. It doesn't even make the claim to be a straight bourbon. It's made with straight bourbon. It's a blend of three, two, four, two, three, and four year. But when it's under those guidelines, you see, and it's not trying to uh, uh, claim a classification. Well, yeah, they could have flavoring, and yeah, they can have um, coloring added. So that's a that's an oddball product. Wouldn't pay the the money they want at the store. I could see it for thirty eight dollars. I say, oh no, I got it for ten. <laughs> So that would be an interesting taste challenge. I can't get, I can't figure, oh, um, Virginia Black's confusing, confusing, confusing. It's fun though, it's kind of fun to address it, but it's confusing as heck. These are all fun to do. Okay. This was a real challenge. That's why it's called a taste challenge. 
because sometimes it's really challenging. Sometimes it isn't, but it, it can be quite challenging. How about rum? When is the next rum coming up? I'm not sure. Probably be a week, you know, a week from now. But um, I've reviewed all the white rums I own. So the solo reviews are recorded. Well, there's two not posted yet, but they're all recorded, all right? So I can just take my time now and at my, you know, leisurely post taste challenges with the rum. No rush there. I don't think there's any rush. Uh, I still got the Ron Pontaba gold rum. Well, that, there's no rush for that. I got to drink down that pie hole cherry liqueur. Oh, yeah, that's, mm. well, I'm not too, I'm not complaining because I only paid $1.99 for the liter. <laughs> then I got to finish up the vodka, the taco, and the taco 101. I know it sounds like work. It is in a way kind of work because I want to get them out the way. I'm not going to waste them. Like I just told you, I'm not, I would give them to somebody, but nobody wants it. You know, nobody would take it. Uh, and then if they did take it, they'd say, oh, thanks. And they'd never drink it. I'd be at their house 12 years from now. I'd say, uh, you still got that pie hole, huh? Yeah, I'm going to get to it one day. They never would. They never would. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to drink it, you know? I'm going to drink the taco, the taco 101 in the pie hole. And I'm saving that for every Monday. Every Monday, take a little sip. I got to work it down. I got to work it down. So it, by the end of the year, those, those will be gone. Then I can use Monday for either no liquor drinking. Good idea, right? Less is better. Or maybe I can do rum taste challenges. So at least I have those open dates. G and JK says, didn't we do this same the other day in Sims 1? Yeah, but that was the Jack Daniels Black Label. All right, that was the old number seven. This is the number seven, the green label. The As the company calls it, the inferior version. They say it on the website. Look it up. Uh, they don't list it on their products. But if you go to Frequently Asked Questions, FAQ, it'll say, there's a question. What is the green label? It'll say, uh. This is Jack Daniels that was at the center, the center of the uh, barrel room, the barrel house, this huge warehouse, and lower down. So it was, in other words, it was in too cool of an area, too cool. And it's younger. I don't know how much younger. They might use some of those barrels to make the blend, because Jack Daniels is a blend uh, of different barrels, not of different whiskeys. Um which is why they have single barrel, right? Which isn't a blend, but um, so they're implying that it's kind of inferior. So they, 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 they can probably only use so much of it and they're not going to dump it. So they put it in the green bottle and they sell it and people buy it and then they get it incorrect on a taste challenge. He says, oh, my bad. That's okay. Um, you'll never see me criticize somebody for getting confused because I'm probably the most absent-minded person on YouTube doing beer reviews, right? Yep, probably so. Oh, well, um, it is what it is. I got it wrong, but I got to deal with that. So uh, that's enough time, 30 minutes. So in a couple of days, the plan is we'll do Tom Sims against something else. And then the next day, Tom Sims against something else. And we'll go through that until we're exhausted on it. I don't mean I'm tired of it. I mean, we exhaust all the other bourbons. Then we'll get back into the uh, blended. I have a uh, triple crown, which I've never had. I'm going to try that. See how it goes up against the other blended. You say, oh, no, not blended. That's kind of yucky. Yeah, I agree. I'm trying to phase blended whiskey out. <laughs> I'm talking about American blended, trying to phase that out. Then we'll do another Canadian. And I think it's going to be Canadian Windsor. Uh, Windsor Canadian, people have been asking for that for two, three years, about time, huh? Then we'll go back to uh, Scotch. That That's the really exciting thing coming up, because that's Chivas Regal. That Chevis Regal, that's the, no, Chivas, not Chevis. Chevrolet Chevette, Chivas Regal. Okay, so that one's coming up. That's a classic. Now, whether it's any good, I, I don't know, but I'm thinking it will be. Better be, it's $33. Um and then we just keep going around the uh, the circle, if you can tolerate watching it. Gabe says, I have a beer I want to show you. 
Well, later on when I check Facebook, you could post a photo and I'll look at it, Gabe. Um, I'll get on Facebook later on today. Check that out, you know, see what people are talking about, whatnot. All right, well, uh, so long, folks. This has been an interesting taste channel. It wasn't successful. Couldn't get them right. But I think that's a strong argument for Tom Sims. It's not overwhelming, Jack Daniels. No. Certainly battling, confusing me. And I think that really is something to argue for it. So thanks for watching this video production, and I'll be curious to see what you say about it. Thank you.